Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jason the X for Alternate Heads. We're back with another tour review. And I'm taking a look at some more of these Star Wars The Black Series. It, it kind of goes. I'm catching up on stuff. Anyway, this is the Star Wars The Black Series, Star Wars Mandalorian, Incinerator Trooper. Yes, it's another trooper. Do we need another trooper? Absolutely. Because this one, I, I love this one. Uh, and I'm going to explain why. Because I'm, I'm a juvenile, just, just man-child. And... But anyway, looking at the box, Star Wars The Black Series, he's got the orange for the Mandalorian on the side. There's a look at the trooper. Not too bad. I, I loved how this red looked on the mask. It just looked like, you know, like flesh on a skull. It just, it, it, you know. Anyway, Incinerator Trooper armor was exceptionally heat resistant and bore red markings in order to in indicate their speciality. You know, red for fire. I would think, you know, like fire would be... A good indication so there you go we're looking at a standard kind of stormtrooper with some great paint apps on it getting up close you can see the red on the helmet looks like we'll zoom love that red pauldron on there and that's kind of what my comparisons are let me get his gun out of his hand or i'm sorry not gun flamethrower that is definitely a flamethrower so you kind of go look at the harness the harness is built into the pauldron by the way so to get all this off, you would need to pop the head off, untab these straps from the canister on the back, and then, you know, uh, that pegs in. I don't know. I didn't want to break this before the review, but it looks like that pegs in. It might be a solid piece, but it goes over that like that. I, I don't know if all of this is completely removable. I have not tried, and I'm afraid of breaking the figure. So, But you do have his... Uh, Fuel canisters on the back, got a nice little empire symbol right there. Got the hose that goes down, two hoses. Very thin hoses, but uh, they seem pretty durable. Which goes down to his flamethrower accessory. You can see where the igniters would be and where the fuel would come out. This looks really cool. But getting out to the figure, you see how the backpack kind of sits on there with that little cutout piece for the armor. Got these little pieces, they're actually flexible. Love the addition of the red plastic on here. It looks very unique to a Stormtrooper. And this is on that newer Stormtrooper buck, and uh, I really like this one, so. But yeah, that is the accessory that he comes with. You got the hand, and he can hold this in either hand. But I would have preferred, honestly, while well, looking at this, yeah, he's got, he's got the trigger hand over there. I would have honestly preferred one hand that could cup underneath where this grip is. And all of these are holding for the handle and trigger. So unless you get some heat on them and stretch them out, it's pretty much like you're just gonna rest it on the hand. So yeah. But yeah, good looking trooper. Uh, besides the accessory of the backpack and the flamethrower, hit the camera. He comes with this awesome flame accessory. And I love this. <laughs> I. I I just want to like take pictures of him randomly setting other things that I own on fire. Now it's got it's keyed with two little grooves right there in the uh, orange part of the plastic, and you put that over the barrel, and there you go. It's time to set things on fire. Let me put it in this hand because it works a little bit better over here. So yeah, not much to it. He just holds this and whoosh. <laughs> it's a, it's an impressive accessory. I know we're gonna get some more uh, effects with uh, Boba Fett coming up. He's gonna have some flamethrowers for the wrists. But I, I honestly like effects pieces, and I kind of wish they would include more of these within their figures. But yeah, this is cool. Just him, just randomly setting things on fire in my collection. That is what I'm here for. That is what I want. I am. I am a child, a man-child, I will admit it. But yeah, this looks cool. So looking at the articulation on the figure, he does have a disc hinge in the ankle with the peg going into the foot so you can go back about yay far, go forward about yay far, and the peg's in the foot so you can go around that peg pretty well. He has a single jointed knees, but they can go a bit past 45 degree, and honestly, how much more do you need? That how far can you bend your leg back? Huh? Huh, yoga guy? Someone can do it, I know. And there's, there's also this hit, and this knee is on a disc hinge. The pin is up in through, into the thigh, 
So you can go about that far. He does have a cut at the thigh, which is inside of the armor. You have two pieces that are going down into this armor. And you can go forward about yay far before the armor starts to stop it. So not all the way forward. Uh, back a bit further than most figures. He can Van Daminate that far. Not very much. There is no waist articulation, but there is a ball joint in the torso, and you can get some pretty good movement out of that all the way that way, all the way that way. Goes forward that far, goes back that far. The head is on a double ball joint, ball joint inside the chest into the first, into the bottom of the neck, so you can go forward that far, and you got another ball up in the head, but you can't really use it that much because, as you can see, it's very far up inside the helmet, so... You know, he can almost like see how his head just kind of goes this and that way. Now, these tabs do come off. He said, you know, and this part is spinning. I, I want to say that this can come off. I am just, a, I, I know I'm going to pull this off and it's going to break. So we're going to do it now. Okay, it didn't break. There is an actual pig, uh, a little pig going in there. I was willing to break this kit, this toy on camera for you guys, so I hope you can appreciate it. So the backpack does come off, and there is some detail inside the backpack. They didn't have to do that, but they did. So at least now we know we can remove it. Um, you know, let's just go all the way here. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Go back to the articulation. Um, the uh, shoulders have a universal joint, and the armor is actually on a different system. If you look, there, it's on a piece right before the shoulder. So it will turn independently of the actual arm. So I can make a full 360 without the armor coming down. And it is a softer plastic on the armor as well. And it can go out yay far on a soft ratchet joint. Elbows will bend over 90 degrees. There are some butterfly joints in there, and you can make pretty good use of those. Past 45 degree on the shoulders, I said that, and the hands, these are hinged horizontally. This one is hinged vertically, and of course 360 on the wrists. They're on another disc hinge, and the peg is going into the forearm. So anyway, let's, let's, let's experiment on camera. You know, screw this, I mean, hey. Because this is all one piece. And I don't know if I can get that head off. Mm. And I don't know if I want to try. It did not. It gave me quite a bit of resistance. I might heat it up or something. It's almost like if you look in there, it looks like there is an additional face behind. There's a face in there. Under the helmet, there's a face. And I... All right, so I was able to pop it off at the neck joint, but if you look, they put a face in there. It's very faceless. You can see where that other ball point, ball peg is too. I can definitely see some ears and uh, what appears to be a blank face. I'm intrigued. Hang on. Well, I could, I wasn't able to pop it off, and I, I'm I'm gonna stop trying. But uh, the only other part, I know there is a ball joint inside the torso, and you could probably pop this off and get the armor off, but. I'm not going to go that far, uh, but at least, you know, the backpack is removable, and we're just going to get this guy back together. All right, I wasn't able to get everything back together um, and put that peg back into the the um, fuel to the, the fuel canister. Um, there's a face in there. I think they put a drop of glue on top of the head underneath the helmet. Uh, it's more work than I'm willing to do while I'm doing a review, but it might be something uh, I'm going to look into a little bit later on, though. For a little comparison, here he is with the First Order Flame Trooper. I couldn't find the backpack. It's somewhere out there. I just wanted to look at. And um, a Tatooine Storm Trooper, which I think is, you know, kind of closer to the, the Remnant Trooper. But definitely a different uh, Storm Trooper buck than the Incinerator Trooper. And he comes in at about 6 and 1 8 inches tall. Here he is compared to my two standard bearers. We have Snake Eyes from G.I. Classified and the Worthy Captain America Mold. So there you have it, guys. That is my review of the Mandalorian Storm uh, Flame Trooper, and it's a really good fig, and if you want to do funny shots like this one here, <laughs> so go ahead and pick this guy up. They are releasing now. 
Uh, I really enjoy it. I love the accessory that it comes with. I don't think I would have picked up this figure had it not come with that huge flame accessory. I'll, I'll go ahead and just admit that. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this review. Please like it, share it, and subscribe to Alternate Heads. Check us out at Alternate Heads Podcast on Instagram. And you can follow me personally on Instagram and Twitter at JasonTheX. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.